So today's sermon is intended to be somewhat of a bridge between our Dia de los Muertos ritual and a ritual that I am designing for two weeks from today. And the key question that I have to begin building that bridge is how many gardeners do we have in the room? This is not a trick question like how many ministers are in the room. <laughs> actual, there's actual gardeners or even pretend gardeners. How many do we have in the room? I'm a pretend gardener. I have an awesome fake garden. So what's the one thing that every garden needs to grow whatever it's going to grow? Soil, right. And water. I mean, it needs natural elements. But if it doesn't have good soil, it's not going to grow. Yeah, Jesus didn't really talk about hi- if the seed falls on the hydroponics <laughs> and you got the right UV, it's going to go. I don't know. Um, yeah, it needs good soil. And what makes good soil? Yes, good compost. Compost. Incidentally, uh, the, the kids are studying compost today and they, actually last week as well. Uh, we'll be talking about compost some today, so have some conversation after service. And so compost, as you probably know, is decayed organic matter that produces healthy stuff. And sometimes, if you really want to amp it up, you could add some horse or cow manure to the mix. And this reminds me of church a little bit. (laughs) You are all the decaying matter and I supply the BS. <laughs> it's funny, but it's more true than you might think. And hold the, hold the BS comments, OK? Generally, it's the case that we are trying to grow something here, some place to process or even produce experiences toward the improvement of our living. And so to do this, we often attend to the basics, the fundamentals, the inherent dignity of every person, and the interconnection of all processes, the interconnected web of which we are a part. That, that, those two statements are kind of the soil of our church life. And much like literal soil, our spiritual soil needs to be turned and maintained and protected and sometimes rehabilitated. And this is an internal process, really. And like composting takes place in the interior, composting often takes place in a container. And for the sake of this metaphor, our container is our church community or even our individual bodies. The mulching and the breaking down of that matter that we bring in from the outside and process and the inside, that becomes a starting point for new life. And that takes place, that process takes place inside. And that is true as well of compost bins as it is of us. We process our experiences internally, in community and in our own individual hearts. So we'll think for a while, metaphorically and literally, about the material and concept of dirt. In a sense, here, we are making spiritual soil from which we may grow spiritual fruit. And today I'll talk about that some. And in two weeks, when I'm next in the pulpit, we will honor that process and honor ourselves and the earth as if there was a difference in a ritual. And much like the water communion, your role 
is to bring the element, bring a vial or a jar, or in many cases here, probably a pharmaceutical bottle full. That's what he all brought for the water communion. <laughs> Lots of empty pharmaceutical bottles, so you could fill that up with dirt. We will add them together to mark our community and also to honor our deep interiority and our groundedness. It will be a ritual that takes its cue in part from the season. This time of year directs us in two seemingly opposite directions. And the ritual will incorporate that. One is the community. The holidays bring us family and parties and extra interactions with each other and others of many different kinds. But the winter is also the darkening of the earth, and this draws us into ourselves and invites us to introspection, solitude, quiet. And so we will have a quiet ritual together. Dirt is a good medium and symbol for ceremony. In the winter is its supposed dormancy, but there is so much going on beneath the surface. Dirt is the interface of life and death, and we will between, be between the celebration of Christmas and the death celebration of Dio de los Muertos. Christmas itself is a celebration of life in the midst of death, light in the midst of the dark, the divine in the midst of the mortal. So something like dirt, like soil, where life and death are transitioning the one into the other and the other into the one, is an appropriate symbol for this season and additionally that we are on the cusp or will be on the cusp of Thanksgiving, which celebrates the harvest, which is delivered by dirt, further underscores the significance of that substance at this time of year. So we'll get into that and do so with our bodies and our fingers and legs as we embody the wisdom of the soil in the upcoming ritual that we'll do together in two weeks. So the wisdom of the soil, some of that wisdom that the soil imparts and that we will embody is that all things are one. And that that one thing is many things. So there is a unity and a diversity arising together. We heard the choir sing all sorts of things and weather must be taken in together to make up a year and a sphere. Out of all kinds of things, a sphere. So, e pluribus unum, out of many one. But it's also true that out of one come many. I don't know the Latin for that. E unum pluribus? I don't, know. I don't know. Probably shouldn't guess. But what I mean is that life, or even all of being, can be viewed as a whole, a sphere, a single unified process, an interconnected web. At the same moment, it can be viewed as nearly infinite number of things, or rather an infinite number of smaller, unique processes that are the parts of the interconnected web of existence that we occupy. So it is possible for both of these apparent, apparent opposites to be true at the same time. And we've already seen the pull of opposites in the season with community and interiority. And so here is another set, unity and diversity. So from this perspective, you can hear the imagined conversation in the song between the squirrel and the, and the mountain 
as being one between two distinct entities. Or you can see this as a picture of an internal dialogue. That the two characters are really two voices of the same being. After all, really, a squirrel decomposing on a mountain becomes that mountain. While the mountain, in the form eventually of digested foliage that it produces, forms the raw material of an embryonic squirrel. So from that perspective, there is a collapse of distinction as well as a creation of distinction. Out of many, one. Out of one, many. And this reality can be seen as a whole in any moment. Or it can be seen as a continuum, as a cycle, a cycle of life, or more broadly and precisely, to get technical, a cycle of material organization. Either way, no matter where we are on that continuum, a toddler, or an elder, or a corpse, or a germinating seed, we are always both being created and destroyed, giving life and breaking down at rates that are different from one another, but always both occurring. Like unity and diversity, here we have life and death occurring at the same time and in the same container. And this reminds me of compost again. Because compost is the nexus point between life and death. It is where death goes to fully and luxuriantly decay into rich, fertile soil so as to become life again. And in a similar way, we, even alive, are constantly churning our experiences and our relationships and all the material with, with, with which we are in contact, breaking it down. And as long as we don't add the toxin of fear, we are turning that into rich soul soil, turning that into life. We are very much like the earth. Indeed, the world's wisdom traditions offer nu numerous testimonies as to this very notion. According to ancient Egyptian myth, humans were made from the earth. The God of Israel created man out of soil and named him Earth Man. He was creative, but not very literary. <laughs> earth Man is the English for Adam. And for Battlestar Galactica fans, Adama is Earthman, right? So. And this morning we heard Jesus understand Joshua is Jesus. It says Joshua in the books. I don't know why it got changed. But uh, Jesus understand the power of healthy soil. Then there is Buddha who experienced his first enlightenment as a child contemplating the life in the soil. We told that story a few weeks ago. Perhaps some of you remember it. So there's a literal take on this too. For, for What are we? In all our complexity, what are we? But literally land with legs. We are a geography. We are by and large animated earth. The millions of synapses firing to create and store memories and spur movement are, at the end of the day, dirt given extraordinarily complex form. You see, dirt, like us, as a community body or an individual person like us, is not any one thing, but a community of interactions. Here we have E Pluribus Unum again. In the case of dirt, those interactions are primarily between microorganisms. As Jeremy Narby, 
an anthropologist and author of a book called The Cosmic Serpent, DNA and the Origins of Knowledge Notes. The DNA text of a bacterium has entire paragraphs that are identical to our own genetic instructions. So on a physical, chemical level, we are not all that different from microorganisms. And so I said that we are animated Earth. I don't feel that that denigrates us, but it does denigrate Earth. And not because we're nasty, right? I don't think we are. It denigrates Earth because the assumption of my characterization is that dirt is inanimate. And this could not be further from the truth. Healthy dirt, soil, I understand is vibrantly alive. And this is Narby again. He says that a handful of terrestrial dirt contains more organized information than the entire surface of other known planets. A handful of Earth contains more organized information than the surface of other planets. And we say dust to dust, or from earth we came, and to earth we shall return, as though that were the end of life. But dirt is life. And the fate of humans and dirt are linked, both by the metaphorical richness of dirt, and also by the existential cause and effect relationship between us and the soil. And this is both cause for celebration and for great alarm mostly because of our behavior. You see, civilizations have risen and fallen based on their treatment of dirt. Where biodiversity is sacrificed to the short-term economic advantage allowed when you plant only one crop at a time, year after year, this is a practice called monoculture. You lose soil resiliency to weather events, and you deplete soil vibrancy due to the paucity of root structure until there is nothing left, and the image that should be occurring to you of, is of Oklahoma during the Dust Bowl. People were shoveling sand from their doors this high. So if you think metaphorically as well, you can see that our Unitarian Universalist religious celebration of diversity is rooted or confirmed in and by this wisdom of the earth that systems are made healthy by diversity. So we can learn this lesson from the soil. Or in the case of modern industrial agriculture, evidently learning nothing from Oklahoma uh, and their bout with desertification, is monoculture on a scale that boggles the mind. And what's more, industrial mining kills soil with machines and practices straight out of a Star Wars movie leaving toxic sludge in their wake and water in our water, and in our water table. But here's the thing, dirt abuse is self-abuse. It results in a poison watershed, water scarcity, lack of resiliency in the face of extreme weather, it results in starvation, and in the case of Sudan, as one example, in war. Self-abuse results in war. Dirt abuse is an indication that we do not know who we are. And that if we do, we do not respect who we are. In the last hundred years, we have lost one third of the Earth's topsoil. This is an affront to our last principle, the interconnected web, and our first principle, 
the inherent dignity of every person because the interconnected web of which we are a part is a person in whom inherent dignity is a birthright. Unity and diversity again. A person is the web, and the web is a person. Out of many, one, out of one, many. We are the earth. We are dirt. We are the land of the dead and the seedbed of life. We are dirt interacting with dirt. A wide lens on an internal dialogue of microscopic truth. Compost. And here's what the dirt says. Life and death coincide. Life is a community of interaction processed internally. Healthy soil, healthy community needs diversity. Unity and diversity happen at the same time. We are both a part of the whole of the interconnected web of existence. This is the wisdom of what lies six feet under the wisdom of the soil. And so it is our wisdom too. For we are compost and soil, figuratively and literally, as testified to by science and religion. And so as we look ahead to our soil ceremony in two weeks, a ceremony where I will, where I will ask you to bring your deep interiority and quiet to our interconnected community. Let us remember the story of the Buddha when for the first time he intentionally achieved enlightenment as an adult. On that occasion, Mara, who is the sort of satanic member of the Pantheon, challenged Buddha, demanding to know on whose authority Buddha had opened the doors of enlightenment. What did Buddha do? He touched the ground. On whose authority do you open the doors of enlightenment? Touch the dirt. In two weeks, we will touch the dirt. And with it, dig into our decaying, invigorating, breathing, silent insight. What wisdom is revealed in the soil of the earth and the soil of our soul? <laughs>